Joining me now is George Washington University law student and dissident project speaker, uh, Tamina de Borzorgi. Uh, Tamina, thanks very much for being here this morning. You also did your undergraduate studies at UCLA. Now you're at GWU. What have you seen and heard on the ground there? Uh, do you feel unsafe? Well, uh, last Thursday, uh, GW Law students had to deal with more than just exams. Uh, right now, uh, the GW Law School is um, in the exam season, meaning that law students need all their uh, all they can get, uh, including quiet space and study time. However, uh, last Thursday uh, we witnessed that the uh, pro-Palestinian students uh, started encampments right next to GW Law School and University Yard without any permits, without any permissions, breaking all sorts of rules, and that had caused a lot of disruptions for law school exams. Our dean of students' office had to move our exams to the basement because of the loud noises. And many of us had to, uh, you know, be very concerned for our safety. We had to get around the block to enter the law school. They had to lock all the doors because many of these protesters were trying to enter the law school without permission. I don't think this should be tolerated whatsoever by the GW uh, administration. However, it's really unfortunate that they're not responding to this. So how do, how do you feel while on campus? Tell me how it feels when you're walking around on the ground on campus. Well, first of all, it, it, we cannot get around anymore around our own law school building mm. because these students have pretty much occupied the entire uh, green area where we uh, used to walk around campus. On the other hand, uh, I see extremely uh, hateful messages on their billboards. Uh, they shout anti-Semitic messages, which is extremely disturbing. I mean, no student should feel unsafe at a school named after George Washington. And unfortunately, uh, I mean, there there is really no rules here. And on the other hand, we see that many people that are right now in the encampment are not GW students. We don't know who these people are. And at the same time, they're trying to enter our buildings. This is not at all a safe situation. I mean, uh, the, this is a private school and it requires more security. However, unfortunately, the D.C. police has refused to enforce laws here. Yeah, and uh, maybe that tone is set from the top. What we continue to hear from students and from faculty uh, and university officials is that many of these these people are not students, just what you just said. These are outside agitators. And yet White House National Security Communications Advisor John Kirby is claiming that he's unaware of bad actors at these protests. Watch this. I'm not aware of any evidence, uh, either in the intelligence world or uh, through law enforcement, about uh, bad actors, um, uh, uh, such as you're describing. But I, I caveat that by saying we're, we're constantly looking at the information stream out there um, uh, to make sure that we have as clear a picture uh, as possible, of course, uh, for the safety and security of American citizens. Uh, Tamana, I know you say you've seen evidence of outside agitators at GW. Who do you think these outside agitators are? And what do you think of when you hear John Kirby saying we're unaware of any evidence that there are bad actors here when, in fact, all we have to do is look at these protesters and they've got hate on their signs uh, over Israel? Well, it is very clear who are the real players in this war. For example, the Islamic Republic of Iran is very vocal about their support for these pro-Hamas groups. Right now, on all Iranian media, they're broadcasting the images of what is going on on American campuses. And I think that should actually send a very clear message to White House officials that this is beyond just a public safety issue. This is a national security issue that they're not even paying attention to. On the other hand, we see that a lot of people people covering their faces with copies and masks show up to campuses where students, you know, just going by their lives. I mean, we have students who are political refugees. We have students who are dissidents from these countries that ran away from the same governments that are actually supporting these groups. So, you know, as a student who is also a dissident from the Islam, who has escaped from Iran, I mean, I do not feel safe being around people that I know are actually being supported by uh, people who are sympathetic to the causes of the Islamic Republic of Iran. That's right. And in fact, you fled Iran as a teenager to come to school here in the United States. Tell us how it makes you feel seeing this kind of ideology infiltrating your own campus. 
You know, I think it's very ironic. As I'm graduating law school, I see that the same type of people who were trying to stop me from following my dreams to become an attorney in Iran are right here by my doorstep, chanting the same type of things that they used to chant in Iran. You know, this is beyond geography. We see that the same illiberal ideologies are infiltrating our college campuses. I mean, as a woman, I could, could not become an attorney or a judge under the ruler rule of Islamic Republic of Iran. And it's very disheartening to see that George Washington University students are supporting the same type of ideology that wants to hold them back. You know, if these people were actually in power, they would not let any of these students to be where they are right now. Yeah. So I think it's very disappointing to see that's happening. Uh, and that's why our job at Dissident Project is really important. We need to educate Americans, young Americans, about the dangers of extremism. I mean, be, uh, all of these starts right here at home, and we see the impact on our college campuses. Most of these students hate America. They hate our American values. And I think the deep cause of that is lack of education and awareness about the dangers of these ideologies. All, all really, really important points. Tamina, uh, Mahak, your reaction. Jump in here. I agree with you. As a former law student and now attorney, I can't imagine what these students are going through. We have to bring a hammer on this incitement of violence. This reminds me of what happened as uh, Jews were trying to enter Vienna University in 1938 and Nazis were present, preventing them from doing so. This is the type of incitement that we're allowing in the United States under Joe Biden's watch. This would have never happened under President Trump. Biden is complicit in this violence. And he's not saying anything, Maria, because you've seen Manmoth poll come out saying 20 percent of his base is for this type of violence. He is pandering to this liberal elite and at the expense of our students, at the expense of our country, at the expense of democracy. This is a type of leadership. And by the way, Hamas is laughing. They're watching and saying, this is a leader of the free world that we're supposed to negotiate hostage release with? You've got to be kidding well, me. Well, and no matter how many times he says, I have ironclad support for Israel, his actions prove otherwise. This lack of commentary from the president, these attacks on Benjamin Netanyahu as he is in the middle of the fight for survival of Israel over the last month. Mike, how do you see it? Yeah, look, they, they want to have it on both sides because Joe Biden has a Michigan problem. Right. Um, he has completely alienated all of the auto workers and most of the auto industry. And <clears throat> there's a large Arab population in Michigan that he's trying to uh, walk the tightrope with. So he cares far more about Michigan uh, than he does about anti-Semitism, about um, Jewish uh, students being able to get to class safely, as well as like orderly um, orderly process on college campuses. Like, this is a total and complete disgrace. We thought the Summer of Love in 2020 was a one-time event. Uh, it seems to be re-emerging here uh, through the lens of this Israel-Palestine conflict. And these young kids, who I, I don't really believe, have their arms around any idea about the history of the region or what is actually going on there. Yeah, they have no idea, it sounds like to me as well, Adam. Well, this is, as, as Mike points out, um, about pandering for votes. Think about Chuck Schumer, the highest ranking official in the Senate, and by the way, Jewish, from the floor of the Senate calling for Netanyahu to resign. Why? Because he wants votes. The Democratic Party is desperately trying to get votes because they know it's so close. Well, it is shameful that we have not heard from Chuck Schumer in the middle of all of this, okay? Well, yeah, the, maybe he learned his lesson. The, the senior person uh, who is Jewish in Congress, yeah, yeah. Uh, and we haven't heard a peep uh, out of him over the raging anti-Semitism in this country. That is shameful. Uh, Tamina, what would you like to hear from the administration or leading Democrats right now? Uh, well, I mean, I think it's really disappointing that um, the Biden administration has been extremely complicit when it comes to this. And we see that they've been taking steps to appease uh, these authoritarian regimes like the Islamic Republic of Iran. They sent billions of dollars to Iran, which was right before the attack on uh, Israel happened, uh, which I, I wonder if there's a link to that. And the, the White House is still not admitting to, to the fact. So uh, I think it's really disappointing. And I can tell you that the Iranian community in America has stood very uh, supportive of the Israeli people. And I can tell you that the Iranian people in America will not vote for Joe Biden in the upcoming election. All right. We will leave it there. Tamina Deepo-Zorji, thank you very much.